and goat cheese just makes everything better. I just add way more flavor. Oh guys, I forgot to try this. Sun-dried tomato. Mmm. Good morning everyone, I hope you're all doing amazing. This is David Hoffman from David's Bin here, coming at you from the beautiful city of Korcha, Albania. In southern Albania, this city is gorgeous. It's in the mountains, right next to Greece, like really, really stunning place. It's a really ancient city, lots of things to see and do here. I'm here at my hotel right now, it's called the Inn Gallery, and this is an amazing boutique hotel. 18 rooms, they have an incredible spa, which I'm gonna use later. I cannot wait to go to that spa, and they have this beautiful, stunning rooftop restaurant. If you're staying at the hotel, you can have breakfast here, which is what we're gonna do. We're gonna have trajana, which is a traditional dish they eat for breakfast, but here it's a little different. We're gonna go in the back now, we're gonna see how they make it, and then after this, we're gonna go explore the city. We're gonna see the bazaar, we're gonna see the cathedral, we're gonna see the main street, and explore what else we can do here in Korsha, Albania. Are you guys ready? Let's go explore, let's go eat, let's do this. And he's making trajana, which is basically fermented grains. Grains with a base, the, the fermentation is based from tomatoes. I love this dish. This is one of my favorites. Thank Always you. for breakfast, right? The breakfast Yes, dish. breakfast. This and after the hangover is perfect. Great. And the bread you guys have here? Yes, the bread is perfect. I we can't made wait. it alone. Uh, we made it here. It's home, uh, house made. Also, you can see the, the baked one there. We chop it because it's better for the trahana. So it soaks into the juices of it. That's the trahana. We have the trahana. As we told before, the fermented grains. We pour it in a plate. Then, dry, sun-dried tomatoes, which they change the texture inside of it. We add a bit of, it, of its oil, whole grain bread. So it soaks the trahana. Sweet smoked paprika. We have also butter which is with smoked paprika and it's nearly burnt butter but it's not burnt. We pour it. Edible flowers always. And we are ready to serve with a side of goat cheese. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Good. You're the best bro. <laughs> and this is our trahana. Beautiful. So we just saw how he made it, right? It's grains that are fermented and tomato, and then he adds some beautiful bread, some flowers, some seeds. On the side, we have some goat cheese, the best. This is very similar to feta. And right here, we have an orange juice, pure. Wow, that is fresh. That's the best part about this country. You never have like juices that aren't fresh. Never added preservatives or anything like that. All right, guys, let's dive into the trajana. Look at this. Let's do this. Mm. Oh, man, this one's good. Wow, very similar to grits. A little more watery. And the bread, I love it because it's very clumpy. It's perfect, I mean, they make the bread here. So the bread basically absorbs the trajana. I like the... Smokiness of tomato. Wow, get some flour here. So this was a dish that people would have, in, you know, during the communist at that time, right? Yeah. Because it was very like poor. This is something you can make really fast. I think it's great though. It's an easy dish, not so so many ingredients. And goat cheese just makes everything better. I just add way more flavor. Oh guys, I forgot to try this. Sun-dried tomato. Mmm, the oil is burst. What incredible trajana. The best part about this dish is the view. Eating it here, incredible too. This one is like another level of a delicious. Mmm. So man, are you ready to explore Korcha? I'm ready, man. Okay, man, let's go. Let's go. Right when we walk outside the hotel, we are in the smack center of the city. Literally one minute walk over here to the cathedral. This is the main street. So let's do the cathedral first, right? Yeah, so we start with the cathedral. 
the most beautiful one. This cathedral reminds me of like a Byzantine church, but this is actually a new one because during communist era, it destroyed most mos uh, most mosques, most churches, right? Yeah, exactly, 2,500, something like this. So they destroy all churches, mosques, Teke, because we have another religion here called Pektash religion. So they rebuilt this, this cathedral in the same place where was St. John Church. Nowadays, this is the Cathedral of Korcha, one of the most beautiful we have in Albania. So we just entered the Resurrection of Christ Cathedral. It was destroyed in 1968 by the communists, and then 1995, Greece paid for this church to be rebuilt. And it's an Orthodox church, obviously. You can see all around, it's like a lot of paintings, paintings everywhere. Every single inch of the walls is a painting of either a king, a saint, Jesus, Mary, Peter, Joseph, I mean, probably apostles. It's just never ending. I can't even tell who they are. And in the center, as you can see, it's not like benches. Here, it's seats. Uh, you know, each Orthodox religion is a little different. Some of them have no seats. Some of them, just, you know, just standing, right? Yeah, like Serbian Orthodox, it doesn't have seats. Greek Orthodox, they have. So. Yeah, exactly. And that's it, guys. I mean, this is sort of what it is. If you want to make a prayer, you know, you go in the front. You put, a, I think it's 100 or 50 lakh. And then you can get a candle. Yeah. Let a candle for the loved one. Usually, that's what I do for my grandmother. I always light a candle and pray for her. So I was wrong. It's not 50 or 100 leg. This one is five leg, five leg, six leg, 10 leg, 20 leg. I got a, I have a hundred, so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get five of these. So that's one US dollar, guys. And why do you do this? Obviously, you're giving back to the church, you're making a prayer, and that's how it works, right? So this is the boulevard, yeah. pedestrian street, lined with restaurants, cafes, shops. We came here last night, it's pretty beautiful at night and it's cooler. Yeah. It's a lot easier. And what's the name of the church? Uh, uh, so the name of Boulevard is St. Saint, Saint George or St. George in Albanian language. So it has the name of the church that was built before, which was destroyed by the communists. St. George Church. So it took the name of the church, the Boulevard of St. George. And at the end of this street, there's actually a tower and it's just like an observation tower, right? Yeah. That's. You can so go up there? We can go up there and we'll okay. have like a, like a drone view. <laughs> a drone view from up there. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this place is, it's alive, you know? There's never any people here. This is where everybody comes in Korcha to like congregate. And look, dude, this is like from the 19th century. <laughs> okay, this is the same thing like in Great Britain, you know? So we have another interesting story about exactly this place. So. As you can see, there, is a, there are outlines of a church that was existing here, which, which was built in 1905, but destroyed during communist time, like many churches, as I told you. So we can see exactly the outlines of a cathedral, which uh, they decided to make this in 2017 to commemorate that, that cathedral. And during communist time, they, instead of they destroyed church, and they built this library, library of the city of Korcha, the bibliotheque. You know, during communist era, this country became an atheist country. No religion. No religion. Zero religion. So they destroyed yeah. as many churches and mosques as possible. So they sent to jail every priest, every imam that tried to, to practice the, the religion. And people were forbidden to, to go to, to pray. And uh, if they tried to do it, they were, they were sent to jail. We made it here to the end of the street. Here's uh, like a mini square, right? And this is the tower I was talking about. It's a little out of place architecturally. It's like a long box. Yeah. But from there, you can go up and you have a bird's eye view over the entire city of Korce. And you wanted to show me something over here? Yeah, I want to show you the villages around Korce, which are so popular to, for tourists, especially Voskopoi, which, which in the 18th century was a big, a huge city, but nowadays it's just a village with many, many churches. You can see the, the places that you can go for a short tour during the winter and summertime in Voskopoja, in Darda, which uh, is so special during the uh, winter time, you can ski in there. And Prespa Lake, which is not far from here, it's a lake, Prespa is, sh is shared with Macedonia and Greece, North Macedonia and Greece. So it's 50 lakh per person to go up, which is 50 cents. So, let's go up. Let's do it, Sen. Uh, wow, bro, what a view. What a view, I mean, this is incredible. Yeah, the, and if you can look at the cathedral, so beautiful view. Right? Cathedral over here, mountains, the entire city. Over there we have that big mountain. What's the name of that big mountain? It's uh, Tomori Mountain, is the best one. Just... Yeah, it's hard to see it from here, but yeah. I know from the other side for sure. Wow, a little scary, man. No? Yeah. Oh my God. It's like you're on the edge. Wow. And this, I guess, was like a mini cafe, right? 
people like to have it in the boulevard, the cafe, not here. Yeah. So. Yeah, so there's something you do, right? You come here, see this? If you want to just walk down, you can do that as well, right? You can walk down. You can take the steps, yeah. Yeah, you can take the steps. I think it's the best view. I mean, if you want to get a bird's eye view of Korche, come here, 50 cents, definitely worth it. Wow. This is actually like really scary because the way it's like turned. Okay, so we finished up here, took a bunch of photos, enjoyed the view. Now it's really bizarre. First time up here? First time. Here we go, Bazaar of Corche, only a two minute walk from the tower. You pass through a bustling city right now. Lots of people selling things, selling watches, corn, hair, I mean, so many different things. And this is the Bazaar. Love it. As soon as you hit the Bazaar, the street changes. There's like a big stones, you know, really Ottoman style. Yeah. Really old, three, four hundred years old. And this is where you know you start, right? Hani Pazar? Hani Pazar? Hani Pazar, That's yeah. like the entrance. Yep. And then here, I mean, we're seeing see lots of shops, restaurants. Shops, restaurants, bars. So many, many shops are around here, but Albanians love coffees. So that's why we have many, many bars here. So we are considered the, the first one comparing, if you see the number of people that lives here with the number of bars. So we are the first in the world having so many bars for, for, for like one bar for 50 people. Our first stop here is Hani Pesar. This is like an old school guest house for the Ottoman army. Let's go inside and see it. As you can see, Hani Pazar nowadays works as a boutique hotel, but it was also used as an accommodation place during the Ottomans. So when they came from far away, so they accommodate themselves here. So it, they are keep using the same style, but of course nowadays it looks much nicer and the furniture is impressive. Yeah, so it's two stories. Inside you have a courtyard. Here you have a well. Yeah. It's an old well. Wow. So water is important. Very yeah. Important. Hotel. Love the rooms. This is really nice. So outside of each room, you have a place to sit. It's like I sleep here. I come here, have my coffee. Yeah. It's great. This place is beautiful. Uh, stones are original from Ottoman time. You can see. So it's supposed to be straight, but you can see how how it has existed for a long time. Like Arjun said, these are original stones from Ottoman period and as soon as you walk in this is how it used to be right obviously it's been restored but this is super nice I love this room this room is it's a boutique hotel I mean it's clean sleek obviously past and future combined dude what a place and here we are back in the square inside the center of the bazaar and this is made up of just bars a few restaurants but mostly bars this is Kometeti, where we were last night. Amazing, delicious rakia. They have like 35 different types. And over here, it's just never ending, right? A few souvenir shops, but mostly bars. Bars. Because you guys love drinking yeah. coffee. Coffee, rakia. rakia, beers, everything. So this city has the best raki and one of the best beer, Bira Korcha. Bira Korcha, so. which is funny that I haven't tried it. I'm gonna try it today for sure. But yeah, so the way this place works is that you walk through here, keep walking and it goes in a circle, right? Yeah. And you go back out. That's like the entrance and out. Architecture, they are, uh, they are saving architecture the same style as in the past. So that's the best thing of this bazaar. So you can see the houses, two floor houses, uh, the windows, small windows, the perfect. Yeah, and no one lives here, right? These are mostly like, or they're like, using for businesses. For business. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Because Cometeti, we went there yesterday and it, that was somebody's old house, but they converted that yeah. into a bar and upstairs. It's like more seating area, bathroom, etc. So I guess let's go buy some stuff. I want to buy something for my kids and maybe have a little rakia. Maybe? <laughs> you, you're good? No, no, I'm going to have my rakia. I'll okay. buy my kids some presents. Okay. We are having a coffee first. I'm going to Coca Cola. What do you want to drink? Coffee? Uh, yeah. Uh, Dopio, Dopio Express. This is very relaxing. Sit down at any of these cafes, get a coffee, people watch. Most people are sitting facing the square, obviously, unless they're in a group. But yeah, that's what you do here. Mm, that's a strong coffee. It's like a Turkish coffee, my god. So once you pass the square, as you can see lots of little streets here. It's called Cuba Street. More cafes, tons of cafes. A few different vendors selling different things like over here I think he has some grain, right? Sugar. Over here you have some luggage. Over there is like just cloth and stuff. So vendors as well. Lots of vendors on this side. And over here this entire street is closed. Wow, I guess they're remodeling, right? Okay, so I entered this souvenir shop. Let's see if I can find anything for my girls. 
Um, we're really looking for something unique, Albanian. I don't know, do you have anything for kids? What is that? This is a bell. This is a bell you put on the door? Okay. Thank you, Fermendere, Fermendere, Fermendere. So this lady has some really nice stuff. These are small handbags for girls that she knitted, right? She knit these. I like this pink one. Can I see this one? This one? So you made it. You made yeah. it. Yeah? We. Oui. We. Oui. Let me see. Can I see what else you have in here? Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so I like that one. I, I take this for my daughter. Uh -huh. uh, do you have another one blue? Blue? No. No? No. Uh, if you can stay here for maybe two hours, we can do. You can make it? Yeah. Alright guys, so I bought this one for my daughter. She's gonna love it. She loves pink. And they don't have another one for my youngest, so she's gonna knit one for me right now. It takes two hours, so I'll come back here and pick it up. So it costs 1000 each, so roughly 10 US dollars. I think it's a great gift for my kids. They're gonna love it. It's handmade here in Albania. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll see you in two hours. And this shop is right here at the entrance of the square. You have like four shops and this is it. Great. So that was the Bazaar of Gorcha, over 400 years old. Really traditional, authentic. I love it. You can walk through, you can have a drink, have a coffee, buy some souvenirs. Best time to go is in the morning, like we did, you know, before 11 and after after six yeah, like after around six. six yeah when it's sunset time it's, it's, it's perfect it's right perfect, yeah. yeah so it's cooler you, you can enjoy a great coffee and the rakia and the rakia always the rakia <laughs> yeah <that's, laughs> we are promoting it a lot <laughs> i mean rakia is it's a big part of their culture you know yeah. every single house makes rakia so the boulevard except the ca cafes has a lot of interesting building like this one here it's a Romanian building which was built in 1936 by a Romanian family and still nowadays has the same uh, architecture, same style, just the color is different. Oh. And now we are going to check uh, the Museum of Education which is just renovated, was the first Albanian school and uh, nowadays you can have a, a short time to, if you want to know more about our history, how Albanian language started. So basically during the Ottoman period all the schools would teach in Turkish, right? Because that's what they spoke, the Ottomans. So this is the first school that started teaching in Albanian at the end of the 18, 18, 1880s? 1887, yeah. 1887, okay. Now, Ottoman Empire was almost ending, so they started immediately teaching Albanian language, so in this case they could protect the future. All right guys, we explored Korce, a beautiful city. We started off the morning really early at the In Gallery Hotel. We had a traditional breakfast, the Trahana, delicious. We saw how they made it, we saw they made some bread, also some fruit, like tower, incredible spot. This hotel is amazing and it's looking in the center of the city, literally like one minute away from this street. Also the cathedral, the bazaar is five minutes away. So we saw the cathedral, we went down the street, walked to the bazaar, saw the bazaar, had a coffee, you know, I bought some stuff for my kids. Oh, and we also went to the tower and from there you get the best views the best views of Korce and that's basically what you can do here in the center you can also go to the beer factory if you want to the Korce beer factory try their beer you can go to many different villages in the neighborhood so if you're gonna do this place I suggest minimum two nights if you want to do a third to go explore villages because each one takes around 35 40 minutes to get to because they're in the mountain yeah well guys I hope you love this video if you did please give me a thumbs up leave me a comment below subscribe my channel for more awesome travel content I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Korce let's go